Now, speaking of giant cells, this is an example of giant cell tumor of bone. And before we look at the path, let's check the radiographs. Giant cell tumor of bone tends to arise in the epiphysis, that's the end of long bone. So the end of the long bone right underneath the joint space, okay? And they make these large lytic lesions that kind of expand and push outward a little bit. And they can have this kind of soap bubble appearance. Some people have described them as that in some cases, but they're usually well circumscribed and lytic. And we can tell it's lytic because look at the whiteness of the bone here from all of the normal uh, the normal uh, bone that's mineralized in there. Over here, that bone has been replaced by a cellular neoplasm that doesn't have much bone or mineral in it. And that's why the, the x-rays can go through it more and it looks uh, darker as, as opposed to white, okay? So this lytic lesion here underneath the joint space at the end of a long bone is characteristic of giant cell tumor of bone. So just while we're on that, the, the, um, the main things to keep in mind when you see a lytic lesion in the epiphysis, the end of a long bone, is to think of, in adults particularly, think of giant cell tumor of bone. In younger patients, you can think of aneurysmal bone cysts. They can sometimes have some overlapping radiographic features. Um, you can also think of clear cell chondrosarcoma, although those are very rare. And then also you can uh, think of chondroblastomas, okay? So those are all lesions to keep in mind when you hear about a lytic lesion in the epiphysis. Those, um, those entities should enter your differential diagnosis. All right, now back to the pathology. So the characteristic feature of giant cell tumor bone is of course giant cells but not just any giant cells. The giant cells in giant cell tumor of bone tend to be very large and have tons of nuclei. Now, these are not the biggest, but there's quite a few nuclei in each of these giant cells. Sometimes there's like a hundred nuclei. So I love it when I see those, these giant cells that are much bigger and have much more nuclei than a normal osteoclast would. And also look at how they're arranged. There's not just a few, there is a whole diffuse sheet of giant cells here. And then in between the giant cells, the giant cells are divided from one another by a whole um, sheet in between of, of these kind of oval to round or sometimes spindled uniform stromal cells. So these cells intervening between the giant cells forming a solid sheet, that is the characteristic feature. Like this is a good picture right here of what to remember for giant cell tumor of bone. Now, of course, like everything um, that we're gonna talk about, there are a wide range of variations and, and that's outside the scope of what we can talk about in a review session. But basically this is a nice classic example, in my opinion, of giant cell tumor of bone. And I think there's an area over here I wanted to show you. If you look uh, closely at the nuclei of the stromal cells, these kind of oval to round nuclei, and if you look the, at those and compare them with the features of the giant cell nuclei, they look very similar. These stromal cells look very similar to the nuclei of the giant cells. So that's a very uh, hallmark feature that the stromal cells um, in between the giant cells should have very similar nuclei in size, shape, and appearance to the nuclei inside of the giant cell. And there's some debate over what the relationship is between the stromal cells and the osteoclasts, and you can go do some more reading about that. But just remember that these cells here in between are supposed to look like the nuclei of the giant cells. One other thing I'll point out is that giant cell tumor bone often has aneurysmal bleeding areas. It will get secondary aneurysmal bone cyst formation. So it bleeds into itself and makes these cystic areas with blood. When it does that, you'll see hemorrhage and blood. You'll see hemosiderin. And you'll often see areas that become more fibrotic and have more collagen and become more spindled. So if you look at this area, I mean, there's like in this field, there's not any giant cells here, right? But it's still giant cell tumor of bone. Now, if you only had this, you would have a hard time making the diagnosis. Obviously, you have to put all of the rest of the pieces together. Here's some of the more more typical giant cell tumor. It's just becoming more streamy and spindled and fibrotic in these areas. And in my experience, it seems to do that more often when it's happening next to an area of aneurysmal bone cyst, secondary aneurysmal change, okay? Um, giant cell tumors sometimes make new bone, but in most of the cases, it's not abundant. I've seen exceptions, but here's some new woven bone being laid down. 
Um, you can sometimes see little islands of new bone formation um, inside and around giant cell tumor, but in most cases, classically, it tends to not be very abundant. Usually there's not a lot of new bone formation. Okay, so giant cell tumor of bone with a little bit of a secondary aneurysmal change.